Hello and welcome back to your second section of calculus. Today we're going to look at section 1.2 which deals with finding limits graphically and numerically. So specifically our objectives are going to be to estimate a limit both numerically and graphically. We want to kind of review how limits can fail to exist and then we're going to look at the formal definition of a limit again. And before we get started, this isn't something you have to write down. Uh, you don't have to write anything down until we actually get to the examples. I just kind of wanted to walk you through this as a discussion point. Um, but if you recall, if you're given a function that looks like f of x equals x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 1, and you were asked to sketch this graph, if you recall, we know that we have the stipulation here that x is not equal 1 because that's going to set this function here as an undefined function. So when we sketch this, we know that we can go ahead and graph the function, but we know that something different is going to occur when x is equal to 1. So if you recall from pre-calc, we used the limit technique to see what was going on at that point. Now to get an idea of the behavior, we can kind of create a table like we've done here and these numbers here are what we type in for x these are what we get for the function f of x as an output so what we notice is that as x approaches 1 from the left we see that our y values are getting closer and closer to 3 and as x is approaching 1 from the right our f of x values are also approaching 3 so even though our function itself is undefined at x equals 1, we can still say that our limit is approaching 1 from both the left and the right. And I hope that's something that you remember from pre-calc. Now when we look graphically, we see that our graph is a parabola, okay? But I do have this undefined point at x equals 1. And we just show that with an open circle, and if you remember, that just means that we do not include that point when we're looking at the solutions. And graphically, as I come in from the left, I see that my f of x or y value is approaching 3. Likewise, as I come in from the right on my x values, I also see that the y values are approaching the same value of 3 here. And we can use that limit notation that says as the limit of f of x as x is approaching 1 does equal 3. And again, it's just written out in word format here. So your informal definition then states that if f of x becomes arbitrary close to a single number L, as x approaches C from either side, because remember for a limit to exist it has to approach the same thing from both sides, then we say the limit of f of x as x approaches C is L, and this is kind of how we write that. So now, this is the stuff where you actually need to start writing the notes. Example 1 says, to evaluate the function, f of x equals x divided by the square root of the quantity of x plus 1 minus 1. And we want to evaluate at several points near x equals 0, and then we're going to use these results to estimate the limit. So if I go ahead and rewrite this as the limit, as x approaches 0 of x divided by the square root of x plus 1 minus 1. I can actually go through and solve this problem numerically. And to do that, if you recall in pre-calc, we actually created a table. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I have x in the top and f of x in the bottom. And I'm just going to pick some arbitrary points on either side of 0, or when x equals 0, and plug those in. So I'm going to start out at a negative point zero one. When I evaluate my function, I end up with 1.99499. I'm going to pick another point at a negative point zero zero one. And I see that this gives me 1.99950. And then I'm going to do 
a negative point zero 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 one which will give me one point oops nine 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 five I'm going to put my zero right here for now because I don't know what I'm approaching and then I'm going to just pick some points on the other side of zero so in this case I'm going to go point one two three zeros and a one and when I calculate that out I get two point zero 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 five then I'm going to look at point zero zero one when I do that, I get 2.00050, okay, and so on. Now, what you can take note here is as you are approaching 0 from the left, it looks like your numbers are approaching 2, and as you're approaching 0 from the right, it also looks like we're approaching 2. So because of that, we can say that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x really equals 2. And this is what we were kind of looking for. Now one thing I want you to take a huge note of is just because this function was undefined when x equaled 0, that did not mean that we did not have a limit, okay? So just because a, a function can be undefined at a certain point, there can still be a limit. Now if we go ahead and look at this graphically, here's the graph of my function. I noted that it was undefined at this point, and if we do this graphically, as I approach 0, as x approaches 0 from the left, I see that our y values or f of x values approach 2 and as we approach as x approaches 0 from the right I also see that we're approaching 2 as well. So because both the left and the right limits are the same or approaching the same thing then we know that that limit exists. Now let's look at some cases where limits fail to exist. For our next example and I realize I just skipped example two, so this is really example three. Um, we want to show that the limit as x approaches zero of the absolute value of x divided by x does not exist. The best way to show that this does not exist is to go to a graph. When you graph it, we see that as x is approaching zero from the left, we get negative one, so let's go ahead and write that. So the limit as x approaches 0, and remember when we show something approaching a limit from the left, we would do the little negative as an exponent on the right hand side. So I'm going to say of f of x. So this is going to give us a negative 1, and then we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x. In other words, as we're coming in this direction, I see that we are approaching a positive one. Now because the left limit is not equal to the right limit, we say that the limit does not exist. Another case where a limit does not exist is when we're dealing with unbound behavior. So if we take and graph the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 divided by x squared, and this is going to be a real rough sketch, you should see that you end up with something that looks like this and that. Okay, a little bit nicer if you do it on a calculator. But the most important piece is is as your x values are approaching 0, your y values are going to increase without bound because essentially what's going on is you're taking 1 and you're dividing it by a really, really tiny, tiny number. So if, let's just use for an example, if I'm dividing this by, oops, 
a negative point zero 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 nine squared. First of all, by squaring it, it's going to make this a positive number, and one divided by that incredibly tiny number is going to give me a really large y value. And it's going to work the same on both sides, whether you're approaching it from the left or from the right. So because this function is increasing without bound and it's not really approaching anything, we again say that the limit does not exist. So some limits that fail to exist, or some common limits that fail to exist, are one is when we're approaching a different number from the right side as we are from the left side. Two would be if we have a graph or a function that is increasing or decreasing without bound as we're approaching some arbitrary value like c. And then the third case would be if we have a function that oscillates between two fixed values. And I think an example that we did last year in pre-calc was taking the limit as x approached 0 of the function of sine of 1 divided by x. And if you graph that on your calculator, you'll see that you'll oscillate back and forth between a 1 and a negative 1. So a limit would not exist in that case as well. And the last thing that we're going to discuss here in section 1.2 is the formal definition of a limit. Again, this is something that's probably on the noteworthy side. And your book actually just tells us that if we have a function f and we define it on an open interval that contains a, some point c, um, then we're going to let l be a real number, and we can actually find the limit as x approaches c of f of x, and that would equal l. So now it's time for our favorite part of the video, the fun fact. And I thought this was kind of cute, so I included it. If you don't get it, ask me to explain it in class. And with that, have a good night, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.